doll Danny, the champion of the world. The filling station. When I was four months old, my mother died suddenly and my father was left to look after me all by myself. This is how I look at the time. I had no brothers or sisters, so all through my boyhood, from the age of four months onward, there were just the two of us, my father and me. We lived in an old gypsy caravan behind a filling station. My father owned the filling station and the caravan and a small field behind, but that was about all he owned in the world. It was a very small filling station on a small country road surrounding by fields and woody hills. While I was still a baby, my father washed me and fed me and changed my nappies and did all the mile lions of other things a mother normally does for the, her child. That is not an easy task for a man, especially when he has to earn his living at the same time by repairing motor car engines and serving customers with petrol. But my father didn't seem to mind. I think that all the love he had felt for my mother when she was alive had he now lavenage upon me. During my early years, I never had a moment unhappiness or illness and here I am on my fifth birthday. I was now a scruffy little boy as you can see with grease and oil all over me but that was because I spent all day in the workshop helping my father with the cars. The filling station itself had only two pumps. There was a wooden shed behind the pumps that served as an office. There was nothing in the office except an old table and a cash register to put the money into. It was one of those where you press a button and a bell rang and the drawer shot out with a terrific bang. I used to love that. The square brick building to the right of the office was the workshop. My father built that himself with loving care and it was the only really solid thing in the place. We are engineers, you and I, he used to say to me. We earn our living by repairing engines and we can't do good work in a rotten workshop. It will. It was a fine workshop, big enough to take one car comfortably and leave plenty of room round the sides for working. It had a telephone, so that customers could arrange to bring their cars in re for repair. The car van was our house and our home. It was a real old gypsy wagon with big wheels and fine pattern, painted all over it in yellow and red and blue. My father said it was at least 150 years old. Many gypsy children, he said, had been born in it and had grown up within its wooden walls. With a horse to pull it, the old caravan must have wandered for thousands of miles along the roads and lanes of England, but now its wanderings were over, and because the wooden spokes in the wheels were beginning to rot, my father had propped it up beneath, underneath with bricks. There was only one room in the caravan, and it wasn't much bigger than a fair-sized modern bathroom. It was a narrow room, the shape of a caravan itself, and against the back wall were two bunk beds, one above the other. The top one with, was my father's, the bottom one's mine. Although we had electric lights in the workshop, we were not allowed to have them in the caravan. The electricity people said it was unsafe to put wires into something as old as rickety as that. So we got our heat and light in much the same way as the gypsy had done years ago. 
There was a wooden burning stove with a chimney that went up through the roof and this kept us warm in the winter. There was a parvin burner on which to boil a kettle or cook a stew and there was a pavin lamp hanging from the ceiling. When I needed a bath, my father would heat a kettle of water and pour it into a basin. Then he would strip me naked and scrub me all over. Sun standing up. This, I think, got to me just as clean as if I were washed in a bath. Probably cleaner because I didn't finish up sitting in my own dirty water. For furniture, we had two chairs and a small table, and those apart from a tiny chest of drawers were all the home comfort we possessed. They were all we needed. The lavatory was a funny little wooden hut standing in the field same way behind the caravan. It was fine in summertime, but I can tell you that sitting out there on a snowy day in the winter was like sitting in a fridge. Immediately, the caravan was an old apple tree. It was born lovely apples that ripened in the middle of this of September and you could go on picking them for the for next four or five weeks. Some of the boss of the tree hung right over the caravan and when the wind blew the apples down in the night they often landed on our roof. I would hear them going thump 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 above my head as I lay in the bu my bunk. But those noises never frightened me because I knew exactly what was making them. I really loved li living in the Gypsy caravan. I loved it especially in the evenings when I was tucked up in my bunk and my father was telling me stories. The caravan the lap was turned slow, and I could see lumps of wood glowing hot, red hot in the old stove, and wonderful it was to be lying there snugged and warm in my bunk in that little room. Most wonderful of all was the feeling that when I went to sleep, my father would still be there very close to me, sitting in a chair by the fire or lying in the bunk above my own.